Hi everybody, hello, welcome, welcome to this live stream. So I thought I'd just jump on here and do a quick video. Um, there's a theme that seems to be coming up right now and I thought it'd be fun to talk of. Um, why are so many spiritual people ungrounded, right? This is to do with the language of the body. This is to do with this, this is to do with a few things and we're gonna discuss them here. But first I just wanna say, um, it's last call for anyone who is wanting a, a channeled reading, whether that is a recorded one or a live session, last calls for that is right now. Um, so do have a look at my website, aliceheath.com and jump onto my email list if you're not already there for the upcoming offers for autumn season um, in the next few weeks. So but let's get back to this, this is gonna be fun. So the language of the body, it's a thing right now, right? I mean, maybe you're experiencing this as well, but there's like a collective uh, energy movement which is happening with a shadow that is wanting to integrate. And that shadow is to do with the balance of our body. The shadow is to do with the bad balance of our energy and our embodiment. Because on this earth, we came to embody, to be in the body. Yeah, we spend so much of our lifetime focusing outside of that. We spend so much of our life doing that. The body speaks to us and it's important to listen to the body because what happens when we don't is we feel ungrounded. We get so connected up to this, to light, to light codes, uh, to one another, to uh, the energy around us. We get so connected in some way, shape or form that we find that if we aren't grounding that energy, or we find that, and this is relevant for many people in the spiritual world, right? This is about many, like many people in the spiritual world find this, that, um, you know, they're just struggling to ground, but they may not phrase it like that. They may phrase it like, I'm an empath, I feel all this energy. They may f um, phrase it like, I have all this pain going on. I have these ascension symptoms. Um, I have depression, I have anxiety, you know, all this stuff that goes on. This is energy. This is all energy. We're going to discuss all of that. Thank you for the question in the comments. I will answer that. Absolutely. So actually, we'll, we'll talk about that right now. Depression and anxiety are two forms of energy that is not getting grounded. Okay. I did a post on this on my social media a few days back. It's on a metaphysical level, on a spiritual level. Depression and anxiety are simply energy either going too slow or too fast through the body. Okay. So when we feel worry or anxious, energy is spinning way too quick within us, sparking out because we're not grounding it, we're not earthing it, we're meant to be channels, right? Our bodies are meant to be these electrical conduits because energy is electricity, right? We are a lightning rod, our spine, we are the, the lightning rod of that energy. We have storms starting to move through the UK right now, it's really exciting, they're around the south and they're going to move up to the north where I am and I'm very excited for a storm to hit because what that energy does is it helps ground it splits atoms up and it fertilizes it nourishes it brings a whole host of elements to help us ground but let's get back to the question that was actually asked at the very beginning here before we go on to what we're going to share in this video when we feel worry or anxiety that is energy being received from wherever moving very quickly within us and we're not allowing it to ground into the earth Okay, we're not allowing it to ground into the earth. So the remedy for that is to meditate. The remedy for that is to be still and to connect skin to skin with nature. To breathe, to slow the parasympathetic nervous system down, to connect, right? And to let that ground through. If we're feeling depressed or depression on a metaphysical level, um, this is about energy being too stagnant. Energy is like water, it needs to move. If it's stagnant, it's no good. The energy needs to move. So to go back to that analogy that we are electrical conduits, if energy has pooled together within you, it's being held in the cells, the memory is being held in the cells of your body. The mind is interpreting it and then we feel a low mood because we're not moving the body, we're not letting that energy express itself. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for the comment. So if we're feeling low mood, the easiest remedy to shift out of that, we have to let the energy within us that is going stagnant move through us. So the best and easiest way is to move the body, move the body, exercise, go for a walk, 
meditation is good for any of it and all of it because when we're silent and we're, when we're listening, we're listening to the body. Now, anyone who, anyone who's ever resonated with the term empath or light worker or, um, you know, anything to do with the spiritual community, really, there is a very ungrounded energy because there's a lot of energy that is getting received, a lot of light, whatever you choose to call it, being received. And we're moving ourselves out of our body to receive that. So what happens when we move out of the body is that we don't, we don't integrate it. And when we don't integrate it, it's unstable. And when it's unstable, the body gets louder. The body gets louder. The body doesn't speak a language though, like you hear me speaking words right now. Although obviously my mouth is making the, and my throat is making that noise. The body, when it's communicating to you, tells you via sensation. That could be a pain. That could be a niggle, right? An ache, tiredness, fatigue. The body speaks to you. It's the body's voice. That's that feminine energy as well. Rest, receive, integrate, rebirth, initiation. They're feminine energies, right? But so many of us are disconnected from this and disconnected from the earth which we are from, which we're made from. So if you're someone who's experienced physical sensations in the body through time, through space, chronic something or other, that's the most direct message from the divine that you're going to get. Because we've not heard it on the subtle levels, right? We've not heard it on the mental levels, the emotions, we haven't followed the guidance system that the emotions are offering us. So the body has to tell us. Yet how often are we still enough and bringing ourselves back into the body to actually feel that? Because normally there is a fear of feeling also. Because there is a pattern and a cycle that happens. Every emotion is like a story. Every emotion is a story with a charge attached to a belief or a perception. And that gets stored within our body. Because every cell in our body has its own brain. It's got its own universe within that cell, right? So when we're not hearing our body, the body gets louder. It's like, have you ever been abroad? And there's that one person who doesn't speak the language of the natives. And they say or they ask something and the other person doesn't understand because it's in a different language. And instead of slowing down and trying to interpret and trying to connect they just get louder and angrier that's like the body the body does that right if we have a pain in our body and we don't listen to it over time and this could be anything we will call it something we'll give it a diagnosis we'll give it a name those names operate on a different level of consciousness they operate in the world that we're in you know oftentimes we'll um connect with the story right of a diagnosis or something and that's okay because it helps us focus. But when we actually want to heal or un unravel it, we have to get to the energy behind it. And the energy behind it is a story which the body is telling. So for example, if your skin is doing something, let your mind focus on your breath. Connect with the portal of your heart. Put your hands on your heart and slow your breath down. And let your mind be in control of that because the mind needs a job to do. Your mind needs a job to do. If the mind doesn't have a job to do, what happens is, is it just plays an old program that it created from when you were first born. And it plays that program. But that program will be outdated. That pattern is outdated. So we have to engage the mind and train it Right? The mind wants a job to do. But when the mind doesn't have that, it goes into overdrive. It starts spinning, spinning, spinning. And then the energy is whirl whirling, whirling, whirling around it, us. And then what happens is, is we rise up out of our body and we go somewhere else. We go around our energy field. We go into the mind. So then we're no longer embodied. Even though we are physically having a human experience, we're not grounding any of that energy. So then the body gets loud because there is electricity sparking out. Stories, right? stories that the cells are telling us, that the water in our cells is telling us that we need to release, 
that we need to heal, that we need to witness. The stories only repeat because they haven't been heard. It's like if the body is giving you a sensation, whether it's an emotion, a feeling, physical or anything else, a memory, a thought, if we can stand as a impartial, as an impartial witness to the story and the sensation and without having fear and wanting to stop that sensation happening. Thank you, beautiful souls, for writing those comments. We'll come back to that in just a second here. And I send you much love and much love to your beloved. If the story of the emotion isn't heard. It's like if you're saying something to a friend or to a family member and you're getting to the point, right? You're getting to the, like, you've got a story to tell and the story is this long and you get up to here and then they interrupt you. They interrupt you and then they start saying about something else and then you don't finish that story. You're gonna wanna tell that story again until it finishes. That's what happens with the energy in our body. That's what happens with pains, with sensations, with emotions on a cellular level. That's what happens. And so if we can witness and observe whatever sensation is arising without judgment, without not wanting to feel it, and just have the, have the, the love for ourselves to witness that whole story of the sensation so that it can pass, then like water moving down a stream, it will pass. And it will release and it will cleanse any of the dregs out as well. It will move any of the, the gunk out as well. But if we don't and if we stop it through judgment, through fear of what may happen if we feel this thing, through anything like that, through perception, what happens is it will repeat. The water goes back and it goes back and it's not clearing itself. It's getting stagnant. Right? So where is the art of embodiment gone? We're not still enough with ourselves. We're not in control of ourselves enough. We think that we are, but we're not because we don't control the mind. So until we start to control the mind and start to um, train it, because we want to train it, the mind wants to be trained. It feels so satisfied when it gets good at something, right? When you're good at something, it feels really good and the brain wants to feel that. And when the brain starts to feel that, and you can do that just through a five minute meditation each day, 10 minute meditation each day. You can go to my YouTube channel. I even have a 30 day, um, meditation accountability series 15 minutes long each each video it will help if uh, if you're called to do that but in by being still and letting your brain focus on your breath just following that breath down to your heart down to your stomach and back again letting your brain focus on that what it allows your mind to do is the brain releases control and the control deafens us so it allows the body to then speak to us and it allows us to notice it. And instead of getting angry that we don't understand the body at this point, we go, oh, that's interesting. Now I've just felt a pain in my shoulder. That wasn't there. That's never really arrived, but it just ar arisen then. I don't know why, but my shoulder just spoke to me. There's something there. And then if you do that again the next day and it comes up, you know, you may see something in your mind's eye. You may feel an emotion that goes with it. You may hear a thought that goes with it, a memory from when you were young and you just completely forgot, you know, something will come up and you can go, oh, that has been stored in my body for how long? Wow, I never knew. Because we've lost the art of communicating with our body, of listening. So if you're in the spiritual world especially, but just for anyone, if you're feeling any physical sensation, emotional, mental, and you really want to release it, you feel like it's a block and you really want to release it, the most efficient and effective thing that you can do to shift your reality is to listen to the sensation, listen to the body. And to do that, we engage the mind, we let the mind feel satisfied and feel like it has a purpose. And the easiest way to do that is letting the mind follow the breath in, follow the breath out, focus on that rhythm. The mind starts to feel satisfied. The body has space to speak. And we can hear if this resonated let me know in the comments let me know how you're experiencing this um i know many people are feeling many many things physically right now the body wants to cleanse it's an excellent time to do dry fasting to do any water fasting dry fasting especially because what dry fasting does is it allows the cells the water in the cells to completely purge themselves to transmute fully and then you fill it up with fresh water again so you can join uh you can join me and 
some friends of mine in the Pranic family. It's a free website, uh, but have a little look at pranicfamily.com. We do a weekly dry fast, 24 hours, and we have lots of other free classes on there as well, like Qigong and Pranic painting and Tantra and various things like that. But that may be helpful, but water fasting or dry fasting, especially dry fasting, will be so powerful for you if you're feeling anything emotionally or physically, and even if you want to do that shadow work, right? Really powerful, very effective. So I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to send you all so much love. And yeah, and especially to the, the beautiful soul who commented about her beloved. So send you so much love and all is well, all is well. If you're called to take in any of the last sessions that I have for this week, uh, I believe I still have one on either Thursday or Saturday and Monday, whatever my last post said, just go back to the last post. I can't remember what I wrote on there, but whatever that was. <laughs> um, for live one-to-one, -one, whether that's guidance or soul contract acceleration, which is a light language attunement with the quantum healing and channel guidance, really powerful session. Please feel welcome to book. Um, and last call as well for 30 minute recorded readings as well. Um, after this week, uh, there will be no live appointments until after the equinox. Okay. So I send you all so much love. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the light which you're bringing. And thank you for the beauty which you are being. Okay. Bye for now.